Ever since BTC started hitting new all-time highs, everyone has been wondering when altcoin season will come. So far, only a few coins and tokens, and a heck of a lot of meme coins, have seen really big gains. And this has led to speculation that altcoin season may never come, because the flows into the spot Bitcoin ETFs won't find their way into the rest of the crypto market. However, there is much more to this story. So today, we're going to explain what altcoin season is, why it hasn't happened yet, when it could start, how to tell that it is starting, and which altcoins you need to watch. Miss this, and you'll miss out. Now, the reason why I want to begin with what altcoin season is, is because there doesn't seem to be a universal definition. Many believe that altcoin season just means a period when lots of altcoins are pumping. As such, you could argue that altcoin season is already here because, well, lots of altcoins have been pumping. Clearly, this definition misses the mark, so allow me to propose a more accurate one. An altcoin season is a prolonged period where most altcoins significantly outperform BTC. This is something that can be easily measured by comparing an altcoin's price to BTC, such as, for instance, ETH BTC. If you look at the BTC pair for most altcoins, you'll see that they haven't actually been performing very well. To be clear, this doesn't mean that they haven't pumped in fiat terms. It just means that they've pumped less relative to BTC. ETH is the elephant in the room in this regard. It continues to fall against BTC. This has been concerning for many crypto traders and investors because, historically, BTC rallies are followed by a rotation into altcoins. In plain English, after BTC pumps, traders will take a portion of their BTC profits and invest them into altcoins, resulting in a period where most altcoins outperform BTC. Historically, this capital starts by rotating into ETH, then into other large-cap altcoins, then into mid-cap altcoins, and finally into small-cap altcoins. It goes without saying that this rotation isn't exact, but it follows the logic that, as markets keep rallying, people tend to invest in riskier and riskier cryptos. This time around, however, there has been minimal rotation into ETH, evidenced by the weak ETH BTC pair I mentioned a few moments ago. Not only that, but it seems that these capital flows skipped over all the other mid caps and small caps and went straight into speculating on microcap meme coins. Now, make no mistake, there are some altcoins that have outperformed BTC, with Sol being the most notable. Besides Sol and a few dozen microcap meme coins, however, most other altcoins have underperformed BTC including ETH. This means that altcoin season, arguably, isn't here yet. Now, as I just hinted, the smaller the market cap, the more risky a crypto is. This is because when a crypto has a smaller market cap, it can rally higher and faster than cryptos with larger market caps. The catch is that it can also crash lower and harder than cryptos with larger market caps. It's risk versus reward. Naturally, the 100x gains you've heard about and we all dream of are only really possible with altcoins that have smaller market caps, hence why altcoin season is such a big deal. But it's becoming clear that this crypto cycle is different from previous ones, and that could have big implications for altcoin returns. So why are we not seeing the same rotation we saw in previous cycles, and when will altcoin season come? Well, before I give you the answers, smash that like button if you're enjoying the video so far, and subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Get in here! Take a seat, sir. Go on. So tell me about these anxieties you've been experiencing. When did they first manifest themselves? Well, you know, I, I think they first started when I got into crypto. I, I started to worry about all kinds of stuff. Such as? 
Well, I became anxious that I was spending, you know, way too much on exchange fees. Like every time I made a trade, boom, more precious crypto gone. And I, I, I felt like I was missing out in other ways too. What other ways? Well, for instance, why didn't I get a, a, a sign-up bonus when I registered on an exchange? I mean, come on, they, they should be welcoming me with open arms. That's a common feeling for many people in crypto. Yeah, go figure. And I kept getting told to buy a hardware wallet to keep my crypto safe, but you know, some of those things ain't cheap, huh? I mean, what's that guy to do? Well, you know, there's a cure for those concerns. You mean medication? No, I mean like the Coin Bureau deals page. It has trading fee discounts on top crypto exchanges. It offers sign-up bonuses of up to $60,000. And it has discounts on the best hardware wallets too. You mean I, I just go to the Coin Bureau deals page and I'm cured? Yeah, absolutely. Just head down using the link down below. Okay, I'm on my way. Oh. Now, let's start by acknowledging the reason why this cycle is different, and that's the spot Bitcoin ETFs. As I mentioned in the introduction, some believe that these spot Bitcoin ETFs are why we haven't had an alt season. That's because it's not possible to rotate out of the ETFs and into altcoins, at least in theory. In practice, it is quite possible that some spot Bitcoin ETF investors are cashing out their gains, depositing them into a crypto exchange like Coinbase, and buying altcoins. The caveat, though, is that most spot Bitcoin ETF investors are not retail investors in the classic sense. They're experienced institutional investors. This means that their altcoin preferences are likely to be very different from those of the average crypto degen. If you watched our last Solana update, you'll know that there's been significant institutional demand for Sol. This could explain why it's been one of the few altcoins outperforming BTC. But if you watched our recent crypto market update, you'll know that the crypto market isn't just made up of institutional investors buying the spot Bitcoin ETFs. In other words, you haven't taken anything away from the crypto market, you've just unlocked a new main character, so to speak. Now, the other main characters in the crypto market are crypto whales, which have been the primary drivers of the market up until this point. It's the rotation out of BTC into altcoins by crypto whales that's caused previous altcoin cycles, and retail investors that have caused altcoins to hit their blow-off tops. Logically then, the absence of an alt season is not due to the spot Bitcoin ETFs, but due to crypto whales and retail investors. As we mentioned in that market update video, we believe that crypto whales haven't been rotating into altcoins because there are no retail investors around to buy them. Case in point, there are dozens of statistics to suggest that retail investors are still waking up to the crypto rally. These include the retail trading volume on crypto exchanges, the popularity of crypto exchange apps, searches for crypto-related terms, and even the views on this channel. These metrics are still far below the levels that would suggest that new retail investors are entering the crypto market en masse. And the key word here is new retail investors. There are millions of retail investors from past cycles who are still around or coming back sooner, but we're missing all the newcomers. This is extremely important to point out because for altcoins to really pump, we need what my friend Ben Cowan refers to as the marginal buyer. Put simply, we need new people for our altcoin bags to pump, probably because most of us have already allocated as much as we can to our favorite coins and tokens. In the absence of these new people, there's not that much for us to do except speculate on meme coins. And it's quite possible that the meme coin pumps we've seen have been coordinated by the crypto whales. They probably know that the only retail investors around right now are experienced enough to use DEXs. So now that we've assessed why altcoin season isn't here yet, the logical follow-up question is, when will it come? The short answer is that it will come once there are enough retail investors paying attention for crypto whales to start rotating out of BTC and into altcoins that these retail investors will then FOMO into. The long answer, however, is a bit more complicated and it requires going back in time to the previous cycle. Of course, when most of us imagine the next altcoin season, 
it looks similar to what we saw in the previous cycle. The problem is that what we saw in the previous cycle was pretty different too. We locked billions of people in their homes because of a global pandemic and gave a few hundred million of them some extra spending money. When you combine these two factors, you get rampant speculation in stocks and crypto. Today, the backdrop couldn't be more different. In almost every country, interest rates are the highest they've been in decades. In most countries, the unofficial inflation rate is in the double digits. Some countries are in recession, with many others close to it. Most importantly, however, the average person is reportedly taking on record levels of debt in order to get by. To be blunt, it's literally the opposite of the conditions we had during the previous alt season. Now, the silver lining to this is that the longer these conditions continue, the more likely it is that governments and central banks will intervene with similar kinds of stimulus, never mind the possibility of an existential shock. What this means is that there should come a point where we get a similar backdrop to the one we had during the pandemic in terms of fiscal and monetary stimulus. Now, exactly when is up for debate, but it will probably require what I noted a few moments ago, some existential shock that justifies stimulus. It's safe to say that crypto and most other assets would crash in the event of such a shock, additional banking crises notwithstanding. Assuming history repeats, the shock would be followed by a few weeks of suppressed price action and then an explosion to the upside as the stimulus hits the markets. On that note, if you watched our more recent crypto market update, you'll know that BTC lags liquidity, aka the amount of money in the markets, by about six weeks. This means that it would take roughly six weeks for BTC and altcoins to start rallying after we experience a shock and a stimulative response. But again, this assumes that a shock will come. The worst case scenario for altcoins would actually be if the current conditions continue. Interest rates remain high, inflation keeps rising, recessions keep coming, and retail debt keeps piling up. If this happens, the next alt season may not be as big as most of us expect. Moreover, it's easy to forget that the structure of the crypto market has changed since the last cycle and not just because of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Regulations in the US, UK and elsewhere have made it harder for retail investors to access the offshore exchanges where the most speculative altcoins can be found. And in the case of the EU, it's going to be very interesting to see how much its upcoming stablecoin regulations will change the crypto market. In case you missed the memo, USD stablecoins will effectively be banned in the EU by the end of the year. This could likewise limit altcoin availability for retail investors. So with all that in mind, we can address the question of how to tell when altcoin season is starting. The short answer is to watch all the indicators I mentioned earlier. This means retail trading volume, crypto exchange app popularity, Google searches, and yes, the views on channels like this one. When you start to see all of these indicators rising, then chances are alt season is about to begin. Believe it or not, but you could make the case for this today. Search terms for things like buy crypto are starting to creep up for the first time in years, but are still far from their previous highs. The thing is that it's hard to say whether this is the beginning of a new alt season, or one of the few speculative waves we tend to see leading up to it. One way to figure this out is to look at how crypto projects are marketing themselves, and particularly if they're making big announcements. Not surprisingly, it appears that most crypto projects tend to make their biggest announcements when more people are paying attention. We've even seen a few instances of crypto projects delaying big updates and announcements when there wasn't enough interest from retail investors. Obviously, lots of crypto projects have been making big announcements lately, and this is another indicator that altcoin season could be starting. However, there have only been a few instances where these announcements actually translated into speculative buying, indicating a continuing shortage of retail investors. So once you start to see lots of crypto projects making big announcements and their coins or tokens pumping a lot in response, that's when you'll know that retail investors have started arriving. And when you start to see these big altcoin announcements on the mainstream news, 
it's probably close to the top. Funnily enough, a few of these big altcoin announcements have also been showcased by some mainstream media outlets. And I'm sure some of you have experienced other top signals, such as friends and family asking you about what's going on in crypto, or worse, how to buy meme coins. Even in these cases, though, if people aren't putting their money where their mouth is, then it doesn't count. If mainstream reporting of altcoin news isn't causing a significant pump and your friends and family aren't aping in, then it's not exactly an alt season. Remember that many of them have altcoin bags too. Another way to know that an alt season is about to happen is to assess whether these indicators are flashing at a time that an altcoin season would be likely to occur from a cycle perspective. This is admittedly tricky to assess because the spot Bitcoin ETFs seem to have warped the cycle a bit. For context, crypto follows a four-year cycle. This means that we should be in the early 2020 phase of the previous crypto cycle when prices were starting to creep up and experienced a flash crash because of an existential shock before going higher. However, it's possible that we're on an accelerated schedule. Specifically, we could be closer to the late 2020 stage of the crypto market cycle and not just because of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. By this point, there are millions of people who have been through two crypto cycles, 2017 and 2021. They know how the story goes and they know what comes next. The practical effect of this is that we won't be waiting a year for altcoin season to start, as was the case in 2020. Instead, it could just be a few months. But again, this assumes that we're on an accelerated schedule. Crypto could still be on the same schedule, which just means that, well, we're all early to alt season. So this brings me to the big question, and that's which altcoins you need to watch this season. I'll start by saying that if we are indeed all early to alt season, then it's probably the perfect time to start accumulating. That said, this is not financial advice, and it's quite possible that it's the worst time to start accumulating. So, with that disclaimer out of the way, the altcoins you need to watch this season are those that will be the most accessible to retail investors. This ties into what I mentioned earlier, and that's the structure of the crypto market. It looks like most retail investing will happen on onshore exchanges, like, for instance, Coinbase. If this ends up being the case, then it may be prudent to focus on altcoins that are listed on Coinbase. This relates to another thing I mentioned earlier, and that's market cap. The smaller the market cap, the bigger the risk, but the bigger the reward. And picking a crypto with a low price tag could help too. That's because most retail investors believe that a low price tag means that a coin or token could pump more when it's actually the market cap that really matters. So by combining a low price tag with a low market cap, you end up with some solid fundamentals, or as some influencers like to say, pumpamentals. But being listed on Coinbase and having a low price tag and market cap is not all the ideal altcoin needs to have. It also needs to fit into a bullish narrative and have a use case that the average retail investor can understand and ape into. You can refer to our video about bull market narratives for help there. Now, if you want to be extra sure that the crypto you picked is the right one, you need to research its tokenomics. That means how many coins or tokens could come into the market in the future, because the last thing you want is to buy a promising altcoin only to get dumped on by the team and their VC backers. And if you prefer coins and tokens that are less volatile, but still likely to do well, then you should consider picking a large altcoin. To be exact, you need to pick a smart contract cryptocurrency that most of the promising tokens are trading on. Hint, we mentioned a few of these cryptos earlier in the video. And finally, you need to realize that if you do get into a promising altcoin at a good time, then you may be better off holding it for the longer term. As many members of the Coin Bureau team can attest, they would have just as much money today if they had just held their altcoin bags through the bear market. After all, Crypto is fundamentally creating new systems, be they financial or otherwise. While most of these systems and the projects within them will go to zero, some of them will stick around. 
The ones that do could be worth trillions of dollars someday, just how BTC is worth north of a trillion today. Speaking of which, it's important to remember that BTC has the longest and most proven track record of any coin or token. This makes it the safest crypto to hold on a relative basis. Although it's likely that others will someday have the same safe haven status, it's impossible to know for sure which ones. So if you prefer not to take the risk of holding on to an altcoin and seeing if it will stand the test of time, consider allocating to the original crypto that could someday become the world's reserve currency. It sounds crazy until you realize that central banks will start accumulating BTC in 2025. And you can find out more about that in the description. And that is all for today's video, folks. So if you found it helpful, smash that like button to let us know. If you want to make sure you keep getting helpful crypto content, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. And if you want to help others understand what's going on with alt season, why not share this video with them? As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. This is Guy bidding you goodbye.